how to behave ourselves on the story. But y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. As you can is, tell them go sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. Hey everybody, it's Friday. It's your girl Claudia Jordan and welcome to another episode and a brand new shady yet intelligent episode of TGIF. Now, like always, we're here to spill the tea and break down some of the biggest news and uh, headlines in social media in an unapologetic, no holds barred way like only we can. So let me go ahead and get started with my lovely co-host. Please welcome multimedia personality and talk to host Funky Dineva. Hey, Q. Hey, Claudia. <laughs> and please welcome brand strategist and talk show host, Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. What's going on, Claudia? What's up, Q? Hey, it's Friday, y'all. <laughs> I went out last night. Listen, y'all, I'm getting lucky. I met a surgeon. I'm oh. excited. And down at the bar? Girl, I went, I went to Girl. the game last night. Now, the only thing is he's 62. That's all right. I went back to his hotel room. And what happened? Ooh. I kissed him a little bit. A and little then, bit? How you kiss I, someone a little bit? Yeah. I'm trying to trap him, so I didn't want to go all the way, but I'm going back over there when I get off the show. <laughs> oh, so you think waiting 24 hours will make him feel <laughs> a ladylike and you... you <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. I didn't want him to think I was fast. Was so that, yeah, that 24 hours makes that makes a huge difference. So yeah. Well, and he's 62. I really don't want to hunch him, but I will because he's a surgeon. Oh. <laughs> so wait a minute, what can I ask what race was he? He was white. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. White fish. All right. He's okay. a surgeon, child. He could be purple fish for all I can. He's a surgeon. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Well, <laughs> you know, it is the first of the month. Hey, work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Well, we wish you the best of luck. I would love to see you fall in love and live happily ever after. Like <laughs> you know, old white man, right? Yeah. What y'all drinking tonight? Anybody drinking anything tonight? Y'all still on them pills? Uh, I'm I'm on water tonight. Me and my surgeon, we drank a lot last night in his hotel uh -huh. room. So you go out a lot, Bucky. I, oh, I'm actually wait a minute. I'm actually drinking tonight. I'm having a red. I'm having a what am I having? I'm having a cabernet. And I am having water. I went to uh, a doctor today. We had to put together a weight loss plan. And they did my uh, BMI numbers, my body fat and all that. And I was way, I was above. I was above. Them be white people charts. They, I think they need to make one for <laughs> black people and one for white people. Because that party, there is nothing about your B, your M, or your I that's off the chart. Off the chart. So guess what my body fat percentage was? What? What, 30, 30%? 32. But ain't that like, ain't that like good? No, it's, it should be like 18 to 20 to, to, to I'm sorry. It was uh, 18 to 25 that, that they wanted me to be there. But you hmm. got a lot in you. Is that based on your height, your height and age? Or what is that based on? Everything. And they had those new scales where you stand on and it gives you a complete body scan. Anyways, the doctor, that. you know what's funny? There was a doctor that was, overweight and, and trying to tell you about your stuff. 20 pounds and I was looking at I was like oh okay we should do this together then you know I, mean? <laughs> I don't believe that scale the rush has hacked it <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all enough about my fat ass let's jump into some <laughs> hot topic now after more than two weeks uh, uh, a difficult jury selection 12 people have been selected for the trial of the three men accused of killing Ahmaud Arbery uh, but only one of the juries jurors is black. According to CNN, prosecutors accused defense attorneys of disproportionately striking down qualified black jurors, of course, because of their race. Now, does this surprise anyone with this? It's definitely not surprising. Um, the defense attorney, who was the one who struck down the people, the prosecutors or the defense? The defense. The, defense, the, the one defense. who's defending the three white okay. men. So, <laughs> I'll never get mad with lawyers for doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, you're supposed to try to tilt the tilt the scale in your favor. That was probably the smartest move that they can could have made, considering the fact that these men shot this man. Um, but I just want to say to all my white people out there that think we're crazy when we talk about systemic racism and oppression, 
this is a prime example of what we're talking about when we talk about systematic oppression. Al? Well, you know, Funky, this is a double slap in the face. And it's because the, the community in which the trial is taking place has a significant number of African-Americans in the community, around 30 percent. Therefore, in the jury selection, there should be at minimum three African-Americans that sit on that jury. And that's why the press has picked up on this and named it a discriminatory um, um, jury. Now, my thing is, you got to be worried about this because at the end of the day, this is Georgia. The South is the South and racism is still rampant, whether we want to uh, admit it or not in these red states. Now, in my opinion, I think the prosecuting attorney should strike to have this move to a more culturally sensitive community like Atlanta metro area. Mm. He should ask it to be moved to Fulton County, DeKalb County or Cobb County, where it's far less room for there to be a person that's going to sway the jury. Here's the thing with such a high profile case, a high profile trial, why would you want to leave anything on the table if we don't get the outcome that we should be getting? Like it would be, I think the defense is of, of course, I mean, they are doing their job like Funky said, but make it where it doesn't appear so obvious and so blatant, just like uh, the, the LAPD with uh, Rodney King. They, they moved that trial to Simi Valley. Now, as someone that used to live in LA, Simi Valley is about 30 minutes up north and west in the mountains where there's hardly any black folks up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And LA, you know how diverse LA is. It's wow. just a slap in the face once again. All right. Moving on. Ooh, they, must ain't got tired of, they must ain't got tired of us burning shit down, but <sighs> keep yeah. on watch them. I, I mean, they haven't learned. We, we, they, they ain't learned. Listen, one thing yeah. I better, you get black we can, people. we have, and we will. At, at, Georgia, at, still at, Georgia. At this point, black folks is fed up. If, if we can't have it, y'all ass can't have it either. So if you don't want us to burn up what's left or wherever the hell y'all at, I suggest you do right. Go ahead, Claudia. And I don't encourage the violence, none of that. But I do like how the last time around, we didn't go to our neighborhoods. We went to some of theirs. I'm mm -hmm. just okay, moving on. We right. don't have violence here in Fox. So this is not Fox. So this is us being messy. Okay, moving <laughs> on. Messy. We this love story. being messy. This story is a mess. Joe Bud. Allegedly, there's a clip making the rounds on social media of Joe Button saying he's bisexual. Now, because of clearance issues, we can't show the video. But during the interview, Button said, I like guys and girls. Spread the word. Spread the word. Button also talked to, uh, took to Twitter to tell his followers to continue to spread the word. Now, do you think he was being serious or was he just kidding? And now that he's open to guys and girls, do either one of y'all find, find him attractive? Is he, if he is indeed a part of the community? Do we care? Uh, Joe Budden's not a bad looking man. I wouldn't want him. I don't like the way he talked to Tahiri and talked to San Santana. <laughs> he, his money ain't long enough to be, to be crazy and be gas, a gas like me. And then, too, when you, don't forget that picture of him in the gym with that little old dangling. So that ain't long enough. <laughs> Neither is his money long enough to be talking crazy. But <laughs> wait a minute, what picture? All right, you got. I mean, you got to look up the picture, child. He got a naked picture down to the uh to the valleys, baby. He was naked in the mirror with hey, no ha with no hang time, and then when it got out, <laughs> it with him because it was little. Uh, we don't want you in the LGBT community. Stay over there, smoking uh, <laughs> and them Latina women with that little old thing. Um, Nevertheless, the weekend <laughs> we just started the show. Oh my god, <laughs> uh, Claudia, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the greater context, I think from my understanding, that Joe Budden was talking about the baby and, and catching backlash from the LGBTQ community. So, in order to prevent the backlash, he was being facetious and mm -hmm. said, Um, you know, I am I'm bisexual you know, to, to avoid backlash. But the gag is uh, people in the industry saying, Negro, you ain't playing that you, you know, is a little bisexual. At <laughs> I don't know. But like I said, the money 
Order Jimmy ain't long. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on over there. Keep going over there, messing up to hear me life oh, in a sin Santana life. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't keep messing with those ladies and don't keep beating them. To hear he said, Joey may be a woman beater, but he's far from bisexual. So I think until he gets himself right, he need to not mess with nobody. And really, I didn't see a picture of that thing. Listen, this is the most press that Joe Button has gotten over there. The Joe Button, it's a, a podcast network, right? Now, remember in May, he 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 uh, parted ties with what was it, Rory and Maul, right? They left in May. His viewership went down 50%. And then don't forget, a couple of weeks ago, Bridget Kelly and Mandy, the host of See the, See the Things, See the Thing Is, left his network as well. Joe is in a little bit of a situation over there. And I think this is just all smoke and mirrors to to deflect on what's really going on in his podcast network that's apparently looking like it's starting to tank. But he made a lot of money over there. He actually found a a, a good space for him in that podcast world. Like he yep. he actually has been quite successful in the space. He don't even have to probably work that much more than what the money that yep. he got over there. I was but- quite Press. You know, his numbers, though, have fallen off tremendously by 50 percent. And the guys that left have started their own podcast and their numbers now are bigger than his numbers. So and I think for some reason, Bridget and them left. I think I smell a little problem going on over there in that network. I hope he fixes it because I really enjoyed watching his uh, podcast. But look what you said. You said your button's name. But then and those guys over there who no one even like even knows we're talking about joe buttons i think joe buttons is always he is a lightning rod he's always going to find a way to get views don't you think even yeah, if this, is, say, this is it this is I it mean, he's found a way to stay this relevant after making only one song because i promise you the only song i know is pump pump it up bump, bump, bump. i promise you i don't claudia name another joe button song right now <laughs> i don't know but now after you mentioned about his thing looking at size and now the song's called pump it up I'm gonna- <laughs> we all move on before we get yeah. to- uh, Kanye or Ye uh, was spilling all types of tea on a recent episode of Drink Champs. Now the rapper addressed his relationship status with Kim Kardashian and said, she's still my wife. Ain't no paperwork. Mr. Ye mentioned that uh, the worst thing he ever did was sign Big Sean to his record label and that he doesn't F with John Legend because he switched up on him when Kanye ran for office. But wait, there's more. Ye proceeded to say that he added Travis Scott, Kim and Drake in uh, a group chat and told them he has more money than them. What are your thoughts on Kanye's rant? And damn, yay. Um, somebody need to get his doctor on the phone because his meds need to be recalibrated. That's what it's giving me right now. Like, Kanye, what are you talking about? Why? I don't even have the energy or the time, Al. You know, I, the thing that I thought was interesting, number one was the haircut. Okay, the haircut alone lets you know something's not right. And he claimed that that was like a Britney Spears in, in inspired haircut. But he talked about a lot of things and almost as if he was having diarrhea in the mouth. I, he went so many different ways. He talked stuff about John Legend, Big Sean. He talked about Just Blaze, Soldier Boy. He tried to drag Drake and then he reeled it back in. But you know what was the most interesting part was the the publicist. Do y'all? I, I actually listened to the whole interview. So he spent a lot of time on Kim Kardashian's publicist, Tracy. Now, you know, Tracy is a white female, but she's married to a black man as well. Now, he basically says that she that she ruined their marriage. And that she uh, feeds the kids information that's not healthy. I, I, this this whole thing just reeked of desperation to me. Or maybe it's it got what we're doing right now, which is coverage. But the way he did it, I just feel like he needs to try to do a different method. What threw me off was when you was down with the white people, with the Republicans, with Trump, you had to remove all traces of black man base out of your voice. And you had that uh, so I'm trying to win best voice. And then now you put your sunglasses back on, you come back around us, and now you back talking like how you used to. I'm like, are you a shapeshifter? Like, what's going on with you that you're uh, like, who? I don't know who you are right now. Like, I, I know uh, he has mental health issues, but it's giving multiple personalities right now because this is not the Kanye West that was on talk shows talking about, you know, with the white man voice that he had. Where'd that voice go? Where'd that voice go? 
you knew something was wrong with him when his haircut was inspired by a bitch that's been in conservative <laughs> for 18 years. She needed permission to wipe her own ass. And that's who you want to <laughs> get inspiration from. <laughs> Somebody go get this man some medication. We're going to get some inspiration from this commercial break. We'll be right back. But it's very much giving ringworm. That's what it's giving. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Oh, we'll it does. It does. Yeah, I am after this. Uh, welcome back to TJF. While we were in a commercial, I was like, everyone good is a Gemini that's popping. I'm like, okay, name some. I'm like, you, Kanye, who else? He's like the Olsen twins. Crazy. <laughs> uh, who else did he say you? Angelina Jolie, crazy. With a vial of blood around her neck. Who else, who else is a Gemini? Come on, haters. Come on through. I love y'all too, though. We're not haters, but we got to like call spades spades here. You're an Aries. Mariah Carey, okay. David Letterman, uh, crazy, crazy, Murphy, crazy. Tammy Roman, all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> during but you know what, y'all are all passionate. I can give you that. Passionate, very loyal, and we definitely are passionate and misunderstood. But anyways, uh, during an appearance on Australian Big Brother VIP, Caitlyn Jenner. What's Caitlyn Jenner sign? Can someone put Caitlyn Jenner sign? <laughs> Probably a Gemini. Uh, that's definitely a Gemini. Uh, definitely not no Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> Tells her castmates that OJ Simpson once told his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, that he would kill her and get away with it because I'm OJ Simpson. Now, what are your thoughts about Caitlyn's comments about OJ and kind of spilling the tea on, let me remind you, Big Brother VIP. I think she's trying to have a moment. Again, maybe he did. So what? <clears throat> What's it to you at this point? Like, I, I, maybe he did. So what? I mean, I, I I just don't understand at this juncture what that does for anyone. Like, he got away with murder. Uh, he's living his best life. He ain't going back and forth with you white men. Um, Can I... Can I interject and say, actually, that's something that Caitlyn has in common with OJ? Because oh, Caitlyn got away with murder as well, vehicular homicide. And we got totally sidetracked by the transition. And we don't even talk about... Was it like, Caitlyn or Bruce? It was Bruce. And Bruce. then it was Bruce. So, 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 so she, she got all her white. She was born again. So she said she didn't do that. Got it. <laughs> you know what, it, though? It, it, uh, Caitlyn... Caitlin is a part of the Kardashian family. We know this family works the media and he's over there doing Big Brother. She, 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 oh, sorry, you're right, you're right. She's over there working uh, Big Brother VIP. Caitlin's trying to use the OJ and Nicole Brown to get media attention on that platform. And it, it, it I hate to say this, but I just don't like Caitlyn Jenner. I don't like her. I think, I think the way that she tries to mirror the success of Chris and using the media and how those kids have used the media it's just disgusting and it's not working for her I, and it, it, and I'm sorry I, I don't mean I don't doesn't mean that I don't like the LBGTQ the trans or anything like that I just don't like Caitlyn Jenner I'm, I'm I just don't like her well, hell you can't not like them you one of them hell. I'm just saying well, I'm with you on that. And I, 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 anyone that thinks that you have a problem with the community if you don't like Caitlyn Jenner, who's the fakest member of the LBGTQ plus. She is, because she still never, is. Who never works on behalf of the community in a real way. And then you actually right. try to run for governor of the most liberal, open-minded state in the union. And you had the audacity to think your whiteness and your Kardashian family ties is going to make you get some votes. You need to sit your ass down. I used to like you as Bruce. I used to feel bad for you because I felt like you were emasculated constantly. But now that you're away from that, I see you are really, you ain't really about, about much. You're about yourself. Right. You're about yourself. And you had an opportunity to really do, do, you had so many eyeballs on you, get so much press just by stepping out in some horrific 80s makeup that you had the opportunity to really make some moves for your community. And instead you vote against them. You work against them. And then you act like an ally when you're not. I don't them like you neither, Caitlin. I'm with you. All them right. Big ass, them big ass. <laughs> and I just and can't my, my whole thing is, being kitten heel. I just ain't, ain't, <laughs> ain't she supposed to be like somebody grandma? Like, she supposed yeah. to be grandma trans. Like, I want to see Caitlin doing some modeling for HLN doing moo's and skin creams <laughs> and sitting down in a rocking chair 
reading stories to the kids. Like that's what she's that that would be transcending because we don't have no grandma trans women's. And she is about old, and I mean, she looked like death becomes her. So, Caitlin, step back and just be <laughs> a grandma. Kim got 50, 11 kids right now. Um, Courtney got 13 right now. And uh, Chloe, and Chloe got two. Go be a grandma. If be, be someone with, it was someone with that, yeah, with access to the best plastic surgeons, makeup, filters, hair, makeup, <laughs> lamp. That's the best you could do. Caitlin, yeah, I'm coming for you, Caitlin. But that's the <laughs> now, now, now look that that's the prettiest she's looked in a long time. That's true. It's beat for me. <laughs> I wonder if Tanya Brown's gonna give give Caitlin Heck the same way she gave um, Kim for mentioning her sister. No, she won't. She won't. She won't. Because Caitlin's white. And those that she's a little giving us Karen vibes with scolding the black folks, but she ain't gonna mm. scold Caitlyn. She ain't gonna scold, gonna, right? Not gonna mm. scold. All right, let's move on. Magic Johnson is opening up about when he learned of his HIV status. In a joint interview with his wife Cookie Johnson, Magic explains the pressure he felt revealing his diagnosis to his wife. In his interview with Gail King, Magic Johnson says it was much hard. It was hard because I loved her so much and I hated to hurt her. I played against some of the best basketball players in the world, right? I've been in championships. I've been in nine NBA finals, so I know pressure. But there was no greater pressure than driving home to tell her. Now, Magic was informed that he had HIV in 1991, just one month after the couple had married. And they recently learned that Cookie was expecting. Now, Johnson explained that he was scared to death to tell her and that the key moment was when Cookie took the test and the re results came back that she and the baby were fine. Whew. What are your thoughts on Magic revealing how scared he was to disclose his HIV status to Cookie? What do you think, Al? You know what? This Look at God. That's all I got to say about this story. This story is phenomenal in multiple layers, and it's also a cautionary tale. You know, one of the hardest conversations that you can ever have about anything like this has to be with your wife, and especially your newlywed wife that's expecting a child. But this is a testament to two things in my mind. Number one, the importance and respect of your marriage vows. Those two decided through thick and thin to death do us part, and they did that. And look at them living this prosperous, incredible life right now. And number two, an HIV diagnosis is no longer a death sentence if treated and managed correctly. He talked about how it was one of the toughest moments of his life that he really just wanted to go away. Now, remember, at that time, Magic Johnson had signed a $25 million contract. He was worth $25 million at that time. Look how God has moved in his life and shifted to where now that man is worth $600 million and probably one of the most influential African-American entrepreneurs and philanthropists in the country today. Had he given up on this because of what happened, he would not have reaped all of the fruit and the reward of this right now. What an amazing story. Hell, yeah. had she given up on what he had, because she would be reaping all that they have. <laughs> we have a comment. Listen. Y'all be acting like these women be doing something so grand when they be sticking by these damn men. It be the check, okay? It be the check. Because you let Magic Johnson ass had been a mechanic down to the pet boys. Cookie would have packed all her damn bags and her unborn child and left. It was that damn check that kept Cookie. <laughs> there was a comedian one time, and I'm going to go to hell for this, but he said that Magic Johnson got the only wife in Hollywood that don't nobody want. <laughs> well, you know what? I hear you about most women, but Cookie been down with Magic since before he blew up. Like, she was with... Yeah, him. they went to college she, together. He was with him when he was broke, top ramen, and, and all that kind of stuff, but I will say... That, that's, that's, how you post to, that's how you post to get them, so they feel like they owe you something when you go to the league. You supposed to get them when they eat in top ramen. I can't let you do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cookie is a good woman. She's a I think solid, she's a good. I think she's, she's a, a solid woman. black woman. She stood by her man. She trusted God. I mean, that woman had to have the faith 
of more than the size of a mustard seed to go through the public uh, humiliation and everything that this woman has tracked through, worried about the birth of her child and her own health with her man being diagnosed. I, I just can't. I, I, I'm i sorry. I know. I know. I understand what you're saying. But, but that woman right now is just a pillar in the African-American community into, in my opinion, the 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 portrait of a strong black woman. Let me get to this comment. We have a comment from Sincerely Wit. Now, this is not from me. This is a comment from our chat, uh, quoting when he said, it was hard because I loved her so much and I hated to hurt her. Uh, Sincerely said, did this thought occur pre-diagnosis when you were putting her at risk or post-diagnosis when your behavior came with a life-threatening repercussion? People are adamant in the chat about this, but you know what? It's kind of like, it's kind of, um, you know, they are kind of like black royalty to us. And, they are. You know, yeah, and we'll know. Say that to stay with someone, you know, once you found out that you're negative, you could have easily took the easy road out and left. And divorced them, right? Especially only a year in. Yeah. So you you, you right. want to know what's so funny? I was always, and maybe because I was young when this came out, I was always under the impression like they had been married for some time. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and and here's what's funny. Granted, I don't know if he admitted that he was uh, cheating on her or not, but it could have been possible that he had had the disease before he even married her. I mean, no, 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 Funky. Remember, he plays on a professional sports team. So every year he has to take a physical. Uh, and every year he has to take an you know, HIV test along with a, a whole panel. Of, gotcha. So he found out when his, he started his 91, 92 um, season, that's when he found out that he was, in fact, uh, infected. But I think also, guys, remember, um, Fox Soul is showing Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific uh, when Magic Shocked the World. So it's going to be on Fox Soul. So everybody who's interested in this story and wants to know more, please join us on Fox Soul at 3 p.m. Um, Sunday, Pacific, 6 p.m. Um, Eastern. That's right. <laughs> Got that out, Al. <laughs> <laughs> You was like, uh, but y'all, they only two lines of text. I'm looking at it, but they won't let me read none of the commercials because they think I can't read. You can't. Talk you, you, can you go ahead and read that and, and take us the commercial? Can you read that and see? I want you to flex one time. I want you Come to. On, to it, well, it's already been said now, but, um, Make sure you tune in to when magic shocked the world on Fox Soul Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we'll see y'all on more TGI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all I can read. No, I'm going it. Welcome back to TJF. Let me read a few comments before we uh, put Al Reynolds on the screen. <laughs> we can read a whole commercial. Uh, we've got a comment from Lady T. She says, why is it that women are always the ones that have to stand by men? But if the shoe was on the other foot, he got to hit the door with no problem. Uh, Yasmin Allen says those basketball men were wild back then. And uh, oh, OK. Oh, y'all are going in. Oh, in 19, uh, Key Biscayne Com Computer Support Group says in 1991, HIV AIDS was still a very scary thing. So it really was. It, I will say this. A lot of there was a lot of conspiracy theories that magic was just paid to say it because it changed how we viewed HIV. Every time we, we it comes up, we look at well, magic. You know, he he's yep. he's an example. Speaking of examples, we're going to give an example of reading and how fundamental <laughs> it is. Al Reynolds, you have to read this next spot and you can even use your finger. So take it away. Hey, Remember, hey what's going on? What's going on? Soulmates, guys, for the better part of our lives, our better halves have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. They think about the cut, the clarity, the carrot, the color, you name it. For us. Not so much. And guess what? Jewelry stores clearly think the same thing. Manly Bands is here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want it in just about every type of earthly material imaginable and even from space. So to get started, order the Manly Band ring sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part to start. Manly Bands has an insane selection of materials to choose from. They got gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bones, and guess what? They even have meteorites that killed all of the others. 
You can also choose from one of Manly Band's curated collections like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. Once you selected your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide and guess what? A 30-day exchange policy and a free warranty. While there might be a 50% chance of your marriage not working out, guess what? There's a 100% chance that you're going to love your band. To order your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash T-E-A. That's manlybands.com slash T-E-A for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best damn rings, period. Manly Bands, thank you for supporting and sponsoring our show. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. If you're enjoying tonight's show, please give us some thumbs up, flames, or whatever emojis you like in the chat so we can check them out when we're done with this show and see how to love. All right, y'all, speaking of love, weeks ago, Darius McCrary posted a video on social media and told his fans that he was engaged to be married, but he never revealed the name of his fiance. Well, the actor is finally ready to introduce his bride-to-be to the world, and she is none other than Rick James' ex-wife, Tanya Haj- Hajazi. Am I saying it right? Hajazi. Okay, Hajazi and James were together in the 90s and have a son together now during their relationship. This was the couple, the, the relationship he was in when they were... Uh, sentenced to prison for kidnapping and torturing a 20 year old woman during a week long drug binge. Now, while on bail, the couple allegedly kidnapped and beat another woman over a 20 hour period. And to make things even more interesting, apparently Rick James was Darius's godfather. What are your thoughts on both of these reveals? And wow. You know, I love me some Eddie Winslow. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I really do. But what's bothering me about Darius McCrary is that every time he's in the press surrounding his love life, it's just something weird or scandalous or off. At one point, he was madly in love with Corinne Steffens. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the whole Sydney star scandal. And then we've got the whole, is he trans attracted? Is he not trans attracted? Now, uh, <laughs> of all the has been back to back, you was brought, you can find out that you go get rich. You go get your God mama. What kind of new fangled, nasty, incestuous mess is this? I know Rick James said fire and desire, but this is not what he was, was talking about. This, Lord have mercy. Oh, God. Can we see that picture of Rick James again? <laughs> I like that. That was my claim to fame. <laughs> Al? I listen, I, A. Hey. Darius got something going on. I know he he seems to be really sexually fluid, too, because remember, in this interview with his new fiance, who is his godmother, uh, they kiss. And not only did the two of them kiss, but there were several women in the room at the interview that she shared a kiss with as well, the same way that she kissed Darius. I think, you know, let's look at who he dated. Uh, Karen Stephan. Wasn't he associated with Kevin Hart's wife? Um, Sydney Star, like Q said, and now Rick James. I just think the man sexually is like a little excitement in the bedroom. The sad part is that we're, we talk more about his bedroom antics and who he's sleeping with than any movie project or film project that he's associated with. Well, I'm agree with Kava in the comments that said Darius is <sighs> definitely a super freak. I'm cool with Darius. That's, my, that's the homie right there. And he comes <laughs> on the show and he's very professional. But you can see it in his eyes, Darius. <laughs> oh see it in your eyes. You are a freak, and you. I love it. Fun. I love you probably it. Probably could write a book that would be so damn spicy. You probably surprise all of us. Y'all yeah. think y'all think Tanya got any money? Did Did Rick smoke up all his money, or is there any left? That estate. I have royalties, right? And I'm sure that estate is still worth a lot of money. He okay. that's Rick James. And plus sampling, sampling of his. When then Darius go on over there and get some of that cougar cooch and get some of them cougar coins too. I ain't mad with you, brother. Me be mad. I was mad about this story because I'm like, yo, what is going on? I can't. I, I, I love KJ, 
but I'm not eating his scabs, okay? Cardi oh. B, she's really in love with o- Offset. It's so obvious. She's a parent. It's a parent. She's in love with him. And I love me some Cardi B. She posted a video of her eating Offset scab. Now, if you have the stomach for it, take a look at this video. Scab in the morning. That's my scab. My skin is. Um, now, I know both of y'all some nasty mofos, and y'all done done some things in your lives. Probably over Cube, you're going to do some nasty things tonight, Al, over the years. Uh, <laughs> would you eat a scab from your lover off your significant other's body? Would y'all eat a scab? It was a little scab. It wasn't a big scab, but would y'all do it? I, I am not a fluids person. I am not a skin flakes person. I'm not even a cornflakes person. I'm damn sure not eating a, a scab. That is, that is nasty. Um, that, that, and why? You know, that's a little gross. I'll kiss it. I'll possibly lick it. But you know what? Cardi, like you said, Cardi B loves that man. And I'm sure that's not the only thing that she swallowed or licked or ate. I mean, quiet as it's kept, but we're going to keep it grown. The, the other things are a bit more appropriate, you know, depending on how long y'all been together and what the status report from the doctor say. But ain't nobody <laughs> eating a damn scab. That's just nasty. Wait a minute, Q. So you're telling me that a scab is more filthy and nasty than the other two? Yeah, two? if if if, if you get that tussy cat straight out of the shower, ain't nothing wrong with a look. It, okay, and the wrong. other one, ain't nothing wrong if it's straight out of the shower. The scab was straight out the shower. No, Al, what would you prefer to eat? <laughs> I shoot all of it. <laughs> you guys know I'm a Gemini, and I I'm fluid. I all of it, all of it, mm-hmm. all of it. So you saying you'll do anything mm, for the right one? Yeah. All you right. Dabs and a vampire from Brooklyn ass. Y'all can have all of that. Is nasty. Uh, y'all want to cover the story? Which one? Nah, I'm not gonna do that one because y'all just uh, it's Portia Williams and 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 Simon. We are gonna move on from that. One. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. A uh, Texas family is heartbroken after revealing their special needs teenager died uh, as a result of a vicious attack in Harris County Jail. Now, 19 year old Fred Harris was attacked by a man twice his size and sustained critical injuries. Court records indicate that 25 year old Michael Ownby allegedly bashed the victim's head on the concrete floor and kicked and stabbed him. Now, the victim, Harris, only weighed 98 pounds and was put in a cell with a 240 pound individual who had proven to be violent and had manufactured a knife in jail. The victim's mother, Dallas Garcia, blames the county for her son's death and said she told them about her son's intellectual disabilities. Now, prior to Fred's death, Harris County was being sued for unsafe working conditions for actually being understaffed. What are your thoughts on this tragic story? Ben Crump will be riding there in the morning. Uh-huh. Ben Crump will be riding there in the morning. And Harris County is about to be bankrupt county because she is going to get a whole lot of money. And, you know, y'all, it, it is about time that we get a serious, you know, when, when they be running for president and stuff, they be talking about infrastructure reform. We really seriously need a prison system reform at the time in which this boy was admitted. And I'm not trying to be funny. You can look at him and tell something is a little off. Mm-hmm. At the time in which he was admitted, and for those of us that have been to jail, okay, because I only went one time, they say if you bonding out, go to the left, and if you're going to sleep here, go to the right. Well, they should have said if you if, if you ain't got all your marbles, keep going straight. There should have been somewhere that they could have put that boy, even if it was in the infirmary, even if they had to house him in the medical unit. They should have kept him separate because it was obvious that he was not going to pan out well in the general population. Right. Al, what do you think? You know, this is just tragic across the board because, number one, when he committed the crime to go to jail, his mother, when she found out, she went down to the jailhouse and she said, hey, my son is got mentally ill challenges like he, he is special needs and he has to have special accommodations. 
And she left thinking that her son was going to be taken care of because that's what they promised her. But what she didn't know was that the person that she was talking about, the desk chart, the, the debt, the sergeant desk sergeant, he was the only one working there that night. So they end up putting him in jail with in a place that didn't even accommodate his special needs. Right. And what's so sad about this is that this is the 19th fatality for this uh, jailhouse. So 19 other people have died in this jailhouse, just like this young man, to the point where the union for the, the correctional officers had even issued a statement before this saying that it's unsafe for prisoners to be in this location. So the super, the super sad part about all this is that even if she sues Q with Ben Crump, she's got to get in line behind 19 other wrongful deaths. This is just absolutely a very sad and tragic story. He should have never been put in general population. He should have been addressed for his special needs from the beginning. The boy's 98 pounds. And show that picture one more time. You can't tell me that he looked like that he could possibly hurt anybody. I mean, that that's just, this is just ridiculously sad. Harris County's out here in Texas. Uh, Houston is a part of that. And that's a huge, uh, huge area of African-Americans. And unfortunately, my whack ass state right now passed all kinds of shady redistricting, gerrymandering. Uh, the, the lines are being re redrawn in a horrific way. Um, they took <laughs> the Hispanic population and the white population here in Texas are equal pretty much. They're separated by a tenth of a, a point. And the whites still have all the power. The blacks control no districts. And I just say that I say that to say that I don't see any changes in the near future. These police, uh, the the they rather pay off families than fix the problem, which is right. a systematic. And we know this. All right, y'all, we are going to take our last commercial break and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Before we go on to the next story, I just want to say that in regards to the last story, the young man that was murdered in the jail cell, that was only 90 pounds. Um, I just want to mention, because I think this is important to get kind of give him not his flowers, but his credit. The family said that they have donated his organs and his healthy heart went to someone in need so oh that's cool i mean it's it's good for someone else but horrible that it had to happen this way right. speaking of horrible things a pile of poop was not going to stop a california runner from reaching her goal during a marathon tamara torklesson was in the middle of a race a marathon when she realized she needed to go to the restroom she said she didn't want to lose physical or mental momentum by stopping nor does she want to let one pit stop prevent her from reaching her goal. No, she did not. One poop was not going to stop her. She told the insider, I thought, I don't know if it's possible to poop while running, but I will try. Horses do it all the time. I didn't want to poop to mess it all. I didn't want to poop to mess it all up for me. <laughs> so she went ahead and relieved herself in her built-in underwear inside the shorts and finished the race. Ooh. She came out and I felt a lot better. Now, the California mom ended up beating her best time after she dropped her load and uh, having to deal with postpartum for 13 months. Um, that is disgusting. Were you in the process of winning prize money or was it just pride? Because I'm not crapping in my pants and running a marathon 26.2 miles. Was it in the beginning, middle end? Oh, no. Oh, no. The article says she ran 13 miles. With the poop. She had 13 miles left. Yeah. So do you know that was like silly putty and Play-Doh all between the crack of her behind and she's <laughs> that ooh. Good. First of all, the heat generated between your legs with ooh. the doo-doo. <laughs> y'all are messy. Speaking of messy, girl, have you either one of y'all ever pooped and had an accident? I'm like, girl, you couldn't have did a Shikari Richardson and just waited for the next one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just wait for the next one. But you know, Claudia. I have pooped on myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all, I, I, I have. I uh, I went and ate somewhere and my stomach was... <laughs> so, uh, and, 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 and you're going to laugh. And yeah, I, the, the, the guy, the, the Russian I was dating at the time, he was getting ready to come over to the house. Oh, oh. And I didn't have any lube. And it was the, the middle of rush hour traffic. So I what? said, I said, I'm going to stop by the sex novelty store, pick up the lube because the traffic was too bad for me to try to stop. I'm going to try to use the bathroom. When I got out that car, 
I took four steps and it just came out. <laughs> and so I went in and this was COVID. Oh, and wow. I said, um, excuse me, do you have a bathroom? <laughs> The man said, no, you can't use it because of COVID. So I paid for what I needed to pay for. And then when I got to my car, like you step back in your really pool. Going, I had to run. There was a dumpster behind the place and pull my pants down. And, and throw I, your jaws away. And I had to do what I had to do and then wipe my butt with my boxes until I could get home. So in nature do call. Um yeah. That's just, <laughs> that's and, just and, and I had enough decency to, to not go 13 miles. I mean, <laughs> you're much classier than the runner. Yes. <laughs> Al- well, you know, you know, like I was it's funny because in pre-production, Q heard me call my um sister because my sister and my mother were marathon runners. And my sister said, you know. It happens. She said, when you push your body and you're running and you're trying to beat your your best times, you 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 can't stop. And your body does all types of things. Your body plays the mind games with you. Your mind plays games with your body. So this is not as unusual as it may seem. People just don't talk about it. They said the reason why this was reported, because when she got to the finish line, she was telling all her friends at the finish line that she pooped on herself. But it's actually very normal for marathon runners to use the bathroom while running. Most of them, though, don't poop on themselves because they prepare before. How on- did you ever do it yourself? You trying to get away from this question? Oh, oh, that's the question. Oh, have I ever pooped on myself? Let me think about this. Probably so. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, probably so. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that I've gotten damn near close. Like, but I'm, let me tell you, I got to be honest with everybody. I'm the type of person that I will use the bathroom anywhere. If you know me and you're a friend of mine, I will use the bathroom at the gas station. I would poop in the club. I will poop at your at my best friend's house. I'll poop at your mama's house. I'll poop at your daddy's house. I, when I got to go, I have to go. But I do have IBS. So I do have an excuse. Oh, so you so, don't definitely poop on yourself. Yeah, I, you know, when I got to go, I have to go. So I'm very cognitive of and aware at all times where a bathroom is. Either that or your booty loose, which <laughs> <laughs> you are so nasty. Well, speaking of loose booty, Dr. John <laughs> Tang, a guy <laughs> in Malaysia, created the world's first unisex condom called the Wonder Leaf Unisex <sighs> Condom, which both of y'all need to probably get for your booties at this point. <laughs> and it can be used externally or internally. I don't need a booty condom. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tang said it's a condom with an adhesive covering that attaches to the vagina or penis or wherever you want to put it, as well as covering the adjacent area for extra protection. So the taint. Now, Tang makes the condoms using polyurethane, a material used in transparent uh, wound dressings that's thin and flexible, yet strong and waterproof. Dr. Tang also said once you put it on, you often don't realize it's there. Are you guys running out to buy this new condom? Absolutely. I got it. Absolutely, I'm not. And 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 females, y'all coochie gonna be bald headed like y'all edges <laughs> pulling that <laughs> adhesive off your coochie trying to hunt. Just saying. <laughs> I gotta admit, Claudia, that uh, do you remember when the internal condom came out like in '93? It was an internal condom for women. I said, like, I I actually, the hell I, not. It's you incredible. didn't. So I tried it with, with my girlfriend at the time, and it was very uncomfortable because it had a ring. It had a ring. In order for it not to go in the vagina during sex, it had to have like this little ring, this little metal ring on the outside, and it was a ring on the inside. So that ring used to mess with me because you know when you when you really getting into it, you hitting that ring, that shit used to hurt, or at least you know it hurt. So I'm glad to hear that they have used an adhesive now to eliminate the ring so that at least it won't go inside because it can get lost. But yeah. Yeah. Now you just can get yourself a Brazilian wax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And but, people in the comments are like, Claudia didn't answer the question. She, no, I've never pooped on myself. Now, ping. I, hmm. I, 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 have, hmm. I have the dream sometimes. I have the dream, but I've never pooped on myself. So now you got your answer. Yeah. Um, a- any other gross stories? I've learned so much gross stuff about both of you tonight. Uh, you got two <laughs> Q, you are gross. 
Right. You put on I yourself. Did. You put on yourself. Went in the sex shop. You went in the sex shop with poop on you. You went in the sex shop with poop on you. I found out that there was no no bathroom. You continued to search and purchase your sex goods. I was already there. I mean, hell, the damage was already done. You came outside and hid behind a dumpster and wiped your booty with your trousers. A lot of cute stories. Cute after we hung with. And that, this was when I had my new car too. I damn sure wasn't finna get my shitty oh. ass in my new car. <laughs> you know, we a lot of your story. We've heard a couple of your stories too, and we've hung out with you, Miami. And, and a lot, of, a couple of times on more than one occasion, a dumpster has been involved. Been involved, right? Because he got that loose booty. <laughs> I'm not here to judge whose booty's the loosest. All I know is mine's tight. Anyways, we are going to say good night. Thank you, you guys. I want to thank my co-host, Funky Daddy. <laughs> thank you for watching us on YouTube and stay tuned for the house. And uh, try not to crap on yourselves this weekend. And if your friends do, call them out because that shit is gross. I'll see y'all back here next Wednesday, y'all. Y'all nasty as hell. Bye. 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 Bye.